Hello, this is Breuer, and welcome back to another episode of our Let's Play for Football Manager 2023 as we continue our road to glory run with Banbury United FC back down in the Championship League. But we gained so much money in the Premier League. Got some pretty good players that are looking like keepers. Uh, obviously, a few that we definitely need to get rid of. Hopefully, we can get some good money from them. But uh, today, we're going to be looking at the end of season review as well as our transfer special for getting back in the Championship League with the goal. I think our goal going down to the championship will be to come right back up. So let's get into the episode. All right, here we are. End of season review. The new arrivals. Let's see what our board thought about some of our new arrivals, because I actually thought some of them were pretty good. I mean, Watts, absolute keeper. We got us a good goalkeeper. He, he's just going to get better. Hopefully we can keep him happy being down in the championship, but definitely, definitely a keeper. Uh, and, and Angelini, uh, I almost parsed his name wrong. Angelini here uh, just came in as a backup. I mean, he was fine. I mean, he, he appeared three times. Did all right. Uh, I don't know if we'll keep him. I guess we could try and buy him for 230K as a backup. Might not, might not be a terrible idea, although he's probably too good to be a backup for long term. Al Gray did all right. Uh, one goal, two assists, 6.7 rating. I mean, I can be pretty happy with that. Ojala, I thought did, Ojala did okay. Uh, they're pleased with the deal. Uh, they are pleased to see a fee, minimum fee release clause of 625 would mean an excellent deal for the club should it be triggered. So yeah, we would get a little bit of profit if he did get to go. Um, I wish that probably was a little bit higher, but we'll see. We didn't see much of him. We only saw him for seven total appearances, but he did pick up a couple goals. And an assist. So I think he's definitely going to be a player that we want to try and keep around. Uh, Reese Evans uh, picking up a goal actually in that uh, last game that we saw. Uh, and a pair of assists over the course of nine appearances, 17 substitutes. So did all right. I mean, honestly, a 6.59, right, right about a 6.6. .6, probably is a good rating for us this season. That's, that's probably well above the line that we're going to be drawing for people that we're going to be getting rid of. Bedford, again, the board was actually pretty okay with this. We paid 1.4 mil for him. Um, uh, he got a pretty low wage, it looks like. And 6.55 is probably going to be what we would consider a good rating for us this season. Peter Owen looked okay. Keddy. Uh, where did Keddy get? There's Keddy. Keddy's looking all right. Carew. I mean, a lot of these, honestly, 6.5 is probably going to be very likely our line. We shall see. Pastor got a good. I mean, we got a lot of good ratings for a lot of people. Kim, why is it? It's being slow for some reason. The, the scrolling. Uh, Humphreys. I don't know. I don't know what I feel about Humphreys. Come over here. I don't know. Griffiths. I, I personally still like Griffiths. He was our top goal scorer overall. Four goals, one assist. We'll have to think about Griffiths. I mean, if we can get better money for him selling him, he might be worth selling, but more than likely, we're going to try and keep him. Transfers out. We probably didn't get good grades for these. Lawson, Richie. Obviously, got rid of Richie. I mean, we got a good chunk of money for him, so they're border content with that. Anybody that they just absolutely hated? Uh, no, not really. I mean, there's a couple they said we probably could have gotten a little bit more money for, and that's probably fair. But really, no, absolutely, like, you get, you just did terrible. Like, what were you thinking? Moments, it looks like. So, I mean, getting rid of Zach Attack for four mil, I think the goalkeeper we brought in is going to be a much better goalkeeper at the age of 32. So if we can keep him around for, you know, another <laughs> eight years or whatever, I think we'll definitely find that he is a great upgrade for uh, upgrade for Zach attack here. Uh, loans out. A couple of these guys got some good improvement. Katongo apparently did not. Uh, and the board was not happy because we didn't get a fee for him. I just needed to get him kind of somewhere. I mean, he just wasn't going to be playing for us. So I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm not too worried about the, the loan stuff. Uh, the board are disappointed that the team only managed to fight bravely against relegation from the premier division, which I mean, they wanted us to attempt to avoid relegation. And all we did was fight bravely, which to me sounds like one step below what they actually wanted. Um, so it can't, it just feels like it wasn't, we didn't miss it by much, I guess is my point. So whatever, hopefully, hopefully we're still not going to lose our jobs here. Uh, they were pretty okay with FA Cup, Caribbean Cup, they're okay with. So I just, I don't know what I'm, I'm worried about. Worried about the board a little bit being a bit ridiculous. Uh, our biggest win was against Aston Villa. 4-2 victory. Yeah, that was actually close towards the end of the season there. Really, really good win there. Master Remember was against Derby here in the FA Cup. Good win there as well. 
Goal of the season was actually also very close to the end of the season was a 81st minute Mateo Joseph goal. Let's go take a look at this. Unfortunately, we're going to have to see several West Ham goals, but it is what it is. Here's a West Ham goal here. Yep. There's a West Ham goal here. Oof. Yep. <laughs> we saw a lot of those. Another West Ham goal. Ah, oh, looked like he fell down. And then finally, we're going to get to see the Griffiths goal here. Carew with the ball. Gets it over to Brandel. Brandel will get it all the way up to Joseph. Oh, it's not Griffiths. Joseph goal. Sorry. Good goal. Good goal from Joseph. I was thinking Griffiths because he scored most of our goals, but... No, that was, that was a Joseph goal there. My apologies, Joseph. Good stuff. Good goal. Way to, way to prove to me that you might be worth keeping around. Um, little uptick in sponsorships. Not a huge one. Massive. Massive uptick in broadcast revenue, of course. Corporate hospitality dropped off. Uh, good competition prize money, though. And then match day commercial just wasn't all that great. Uh, we did drop in rating. Re reputation a little bit, unfortunately. But I think we've got to be right on the edge. It would, it would be my uh, expectation. We're probably right on the tipping point of three, two and a half star, three star. So I think we'll be okay. Um, Ojala actually picking up most shirts sold. For somebody we picked up as late as that, that's impressive. Mateo, Joseph, M. Dooney, of course, Shay, and of course, Watts. I mean, Watts, I'd wear a Watts shirt at this point. <laughs> I mean, the guy, the guy looks like he's going to be really good for us going forward. How we lined up. It's actually telling us we lined up in the 4-2-4. Or four two two two, however you want to look at it, uh, defensive formation here. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think that's what we did most of the time, but I guess it's what we it kind of expects us. And this is kind of the team that they think is our best: Watts, Hecker, Pastor, Kamali, Bedford, Humphreys, M. Dooney, yeah, of course, Evans, Hurd, Salisbury, and Griffiths. Yeah, okay. I mean, again, I think uh, Ojala would probably be in this had he been around a little bit longer. Potentially, we'll find out. Uh, manager awards. We did get Sky, Skybet Championship Manager of the Year last year, which again just adds even more ammunition to the idea that it would be absolutely ridiculous for the board to fire us. Uh, pl fans Player of the Season was Alan Watts, of course. Young Player of the Season was Alan Watts. Signing of the Season was Alan Watts. I completely agree. Uh, goal of the Season was Mateo Joseph. We saw that top goal score. Actually, it was from Joseph on four. <gasps> Sorry, I thought it was Griffiths. Um, Vernon picking up the most assists with two. <sighs> Such a rough season. Uh, most player of the match awards was Watts with two. He actually got two player of the match awards. That's awesome. Highest average rating was Watts, almost a 7.0. And of course, passes completed was Carew there. Competition awards, apparently we didn't get any. Uh, fastest goal, 14 second goal from Griffiths. Good to see that. History in the making. You're hard working at, okay, already seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Banbury spent much of the time hugging the bottom of the table and their fans will be forgiven for having to turn their attention towards next season well before the end of the tumultuous campaign. Honestly, I probably turned my attention to the next season as well. I do not blame them. Uh, it's our first actual relegation, right? Um, so, because even Buxton didn't get relegated, did they? All right, because we got, we got fired before the end of the season. That's right. We got fired before the season was done. Uh, we did relegate them, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, Kelmsford did get relegated, which is part of the reason why we couldn't play with them any longer anyway. So we did relegate one team, I suppose. Uh, but of course, then we've been at uh, Banbury ever since then, and it has been all uphill from there, except for now. And again, I still think this is a net gain, not a overall loss. So hopefully the board agrees with me. Uh, players inducted the best 11. Let's see. Heard getting into the best 11. Well-deserved. Uh, M. Dooney, obviously well-deserved. M. Dooney gets right into the starting as well as Heard. Good to see that. Yeah. Pretty happy. I mean, Pollock. Remember him, Richie, Charles. Yeah, this is a good lineup. Matheson, Hayes, Green, Chizoba. <laughs> Zach Attack. Uh, some of those guys. Miss, miss them. Good, good guys, for sure. Um... Where is Richie right now? He's in, what is this? Swiss. And then Oyadel is in Bradford City. Okay, good for him. 
League One. Cool. All right. Uh, season review. Ready to check that out. I mean, the 2020. This is actually starting to get close to being um, teams that we actually care about because we, you know, teams that we actually remember. So, kind of funny. Where is Pollock? Is he on this list? No. What about down here? Is he even playing still? I don't see him on this list anywhere. Where would he be? Let's go look at Pollock here. Where is he? Is he retired? He retired. Okay. Fair enough. 103 goals for us. Pollock was good. Really enjoyed having Pollock. I mean, he's obviously well below where we're at now, but definitely, definitely fun to see guys like that for the most part. I mean, they're, they're, they're about to offer me a vision. So that tells me that more than likely we are, we're fine, right? A p attempt to avoid relegation from the Skybet Championship? That seems a bit low. Do they really think we're not gonna we're gonna be fighting for top half finish? Is that true? I mean, play attacking football. We should be able to get back into that, making those. I'm okay with that. High tempo pressing, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with most of this. We're still in progress of expanding our stadium, apparently. I didn't realize we were. Or are they about to they're they're looking to expand the stadium, which I hope they do. I hope they keep expanding it where we can, because we need the money from that. I mean, although we're never going to get enough money from our stadium uh, to compare with the, the television money from the Premier League. We will accept the current vision as is, I guess. I mean, that's a very low bar, but we'll accept it as is. I think we could definitely push harder than that, to be perfectly honest, but we'll find out. Um, what? These are very strange... Like, why, why is it just saying really? I mean, we're going to go with this, I guess. It seems strange to me that it's not like better than that. We'll just do promises later. I'm okay with that. Um, Yeah. I, are we really going to be fighting against relegation? Just after, I mean, just after getting promoted from the, or relegated from the Premier League? Seems a bit odd to me, but I could be wrong. All right, let's skip ahead just for a second. I just want to see if anything's going to update here, and then we will probably put a little bit of a, cut in there until I can go away and do some good stuff. Oh, yay! What are they doing? Oh, a whole... Uh, just 270 more seats. Is that all they're going to do? Wow. The overall capacity will be reduced? Interesting. They're going to reduce our, reduce our overall capacity. We just need a new stadium. I don't know if we... I don't know if you can get a second new stadium in the same save, or I think it takes like 10 years or something ridiculous, 10, 20 years, some, some crazy number. So it's very unlikely that we're going to get us a new stadium anytime soon, but I don't know. Hopefully, again, we're just going to have to count on television money and other things to get us the money that we need. Um, Hey, we're raising our youth uh, rating. That should be good for us overall. Any other good tidbits that we're going to find out about? No. All right. Cool. Well, let's take a quick look at the squad and kind of see where the line is that we're probably going to be drawing the line at. So if we look at overall average rating, uh, I mean, we already talked about it. 6.5 is probably our new number, quite frankly. So anything below 6.5 is probably up for potential releasement. Uh, one of the most expensive players that is down there. We got two guys, Spagnoli and Griffiths. Now, Griffiths, Score, I mean, he wasn't he wasn't listed as our most scoring because Mateo apparently got that honor. But Griffiths also scored four goals on one assist. Uh, apparently, he did it on more games, though. So, in that argument, Mateo was played better in that, in that context. Mateo, though, is 29. Griffiths is 20. So, Griffiths has, in theory, more room, a lot more room to grow. But if we got, you know, 8 million bucks for Griffiths, would I be okay with that? That's a lot of money. I think we're going to have to at least shop him around. Same thing with Spagnoli here. Spagnoli played 25 games, 6.3, 22 years old. I mean, he's got a lot of potential. But, and maybe it's just because they, you know, we shouldn't judge him too harshly. Actually, what I should do is, uh, was Griffiths this season that we got him? Uh, no, we had him on loan last season, and he was on a 6.88. That's the reason we brought him back. So we know he can play in the championship level. What about Spagnoli? I can't remember when we got him. 
this is the first season we've had him. Spagnoli definitely might be worth putting up. I feel like I kind of want to hold on to Griffith, to be perfectly honest. Might just be personal preference and whatever, but just feels like it might be a decent idea. Hecker here is right at a 6.5. Could also be worth a good chunk of money. He did not play well at all. Got some potential ahead of him. We might shop some of these players around that are worth something just to see what we can do with them. Uh, anybody at the top that would be worth selling? Not really. I'd, I'd probably prefer to hold on to most of these guys. Something like that, though. And as far as formation, I just I don't know. Um, I may go look and see what formations. Can we even see that? We go look at the competition and we go look at... I don't want to look at Premier. Let's go down one level to the championship. And we look at... Um, I want to look at... The league table. There we go. We go look at some of these teams at the top. So like Sunderland. Can we see what formation they ran for most of it? They ran a tactics in your squad. Looks like they ran, you know, not too far different from what we were running. Uh, two defensive midfielders. Uh, instead of having two strikers, they have a... Sh uh, we've, we've run this before. This is a similar formation to, formation to what we've run before. So it might be something like that. Might be worth going for. What about um, Fulham here? What did they do? I mean, there are, again, some similarities here. Playing with the wingers, playing with one striker. Just a change of defensive midfielder from, from central... Uh, Shadow, or not Shadow Striker, uh, attacking midfielder in the middle here. Uh, and I think, of course, they push their uh, midfielders up a little bit. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. They, I, I'm not saying that these are the exact same formation. They obviously play differently, but the idea that wingers are in both of them is probably something we're going to want to stick with. Something of that nature, attacking wingers specifically. Uh, what about a good a team like Norwich here? 4-4-2. Four, four, I've thought about going to just a, I mean, I call it boring because it's just, it feels very basic. But truth be told, I mean, if there's 442 can work really well. I thought about it. What about Lester here? Lester? Lester? I forgot how you say that. Similar to uh, the other team, um, 433. So again, more evidence for those attacking wingers. If three of the top four teams have attacking wingers, then, you know, that, that probably is something we want to go with. Same formation. So honestly, this formation right here, I mean, don't get me wrong, they Sunderland had really good success. Obviously, they're the number one team. But a lot of these other teams are having good success as well with a very similar formation. So it's starting to look like 4-3-3. Uh, the DM wide formation is something we should at least explore with the potential possibility of, of changing it. Maybe having a second formation with the attacking midfielder, seeing what kind of players we have that fit both those formations and, and kind of going from there. So that's kind of what I was thinking about anyway, but I just kind of wanted to prove that that's probably what these guys went with. Uh, for, just for giggles, what kind of formation does Man City run? Yeah. I mean, there you go. This attacking DM 4-3-3 appears to be a favorite for a lot of teams. Wow, Arsenal got second in the 4-4-2, huh? Really? What about Tottenham? That's not registration, sorry. Tactics. 4-3-3. See, most of the teams are going 4-3-3, it looks like. So I think I'm going to start with that, see what kind of team we can build around that, and then move some things around. But we'll be back when I have news about either transfers out or transfers in. All right, we are back, ready for the first game of the season. It's going to be a tough one against Leicester here. Uh, they actually got relegated from the Premier League the same season we went up. Uh, last season, they were fourth overall, so they didn't quite get back up in there, but they are predicted to be the best team in the championship this season. So it's going to be a tough first game, although it is a home game, so hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, I didn't quite maybe get some of the players that I was hoping for. Like, I didn't go, go get my... My wonder kid that I was hoping for necessarily. Um, and I didn't really get like the amazing star player, although we did get some improvements, I think. We got actually I think we got several improvements uh in a, quite a few places. So I think we've got a good team. I do have kind of a weird formation, and I'll go over that here in just a moment. I played around with some different formations and stuff like that in the preseason. Uh, as you can see, we did 424 DM wide. Uh that did okay, but of course that was just lesser opponents. So I didn't want to read too much into that. In fact, I actually thought we struggled more in that than in those first three games than we should have. Uh, we then swapped to some other formations and truth be told, I actually thought this formation we used against Chelsea was, was all right. We did end up losing, but we didn't lose until the very, very end. It looks like it was an own goal. I actually simmed. When I do friendlies, I usually play the first half just to kind of get an idea for things. And then I send the second half just so I don't have to watch the whole thing. 
So, oh no, that's us getting the goal. I'm sorry, sorry, I read that wrong. I was like, wait a minute. So they did pick up a couple goals, but they didn't pick up goals until we did our rotation. Um, and so our star players actually held them to nothing. And then we brought in our rotational players uh, in every single spot and uh, just to give them some time. And uh, that's when they started scoring some goals. So honestly, I actually thought we did pretty well in the first half and we'll take a look at the formation here in a minute. But transfers, there are a couple people that I probably wish hadn't gone, but they kind of pressed the issue a bit. So we're going to take a look at those. So got some more stuff coming in and going out. Um, so there are more things happening. As of right now, we have only spent a million pounds more than we have uh, coming in. So we, we're actually doing really good financially. Uh, let me double check to make sure I didn't have anybody on the out. No, nobody here. Uh, you guys saw Ujala. Okay, so yeah. So the, everything was on this side of things. So people going out, uh, had out left on a free. So I didn't really, that, that's fine. He had not really been doing a whole lot for us. Uh, 6.45 last season. So not too worried about it. We brought him in for 25K back in the championship. Get left him on a free. I mean, that's fine. We didn't lose much for that one. Uh, I'll come back to the two big ones. Amduni and Pastor. Uh, Christopher Lawrence left on going uh, a value going up to 1.3 mil. Uh, we brought him in uh, for free. So, I mean, it's not a lot of money that we got for him. But it is, you know, we got something for him, so I'm I'm, I'm mo mostly okay with that. Uh, Brett Moss left uh, for a relatively small value here. Uh, he has not done amazing things for us, although we did also get a tiny profit for him. So happy with that, uh, especially again considering some of these other ones. <laughs> uh, Vernon left on a loan uh, with I think a future fee, I believe, was part of this. Mm. I uh, don't remember how to see that. I think there's an optional future fee, right? I can't remember exactly, but he has not done a whole lot for us. If there's a future fee in there, that's fine. I, we just needed to get him off the books. Cameron actually was a probably a pretty good one overall. Uh, he left uh, 30 years old. He wasn't going to get much better. He, he played okay for us uh, a few times that he played, but we haven't played him since... I'm sorry, I'm thinking of a different guy. I'm thinking of different... Uh, I think I'm thinking of Hayes. Not Cameron. Cameron actually did not do well for us last season. 6.48 on 7 and starts. So we did lose a teeny tiny bit of money for him. But honestly, not terrible. I mean, we did a couple hundred thousand bucks. The profit we made for those other guys make us break even. I don't know why I was thinking Cameron somebody else. I apologize for that. But uh, so he's off the books. Uh, it's fine. We weren't going to play him. Not a big deal. Rattray's out on a loan. I kind of wanted to keep him, to be honest. But I've got some players that I think are going to be better in that spot. And I just wanted to get something for him maybe he'll continue to develop maybe we can sell him on at some point i don't know but he's out no big deal um we do have a couple other guys that are tr we're trying to get to leave i'll go ahead and show you those guys real quick uh we're trying to get spagnoli out on a loan um again he's another player that i probably wouldn't mind keeping and i had some ideas for how i wanted to play him this season but there were like two other players in the spot that i wanted to play him i was actually going to play him as an attacking midfielder on the right hand side uh, just to try something different. And I have, but I have two other players that can play over there. And I mean, he's just a guy that we had some people coming in with interest for. So I figured, you know what? Let's make him happy because he was getting a little bit upset uh, that we kept saying no. And let's see if we can get some money for him. No big deal. Uh, if he develops, we can sell him on or keep him, whatever. If not, no big deal. Uh, Atoll is our, probably our fourth or probably our fifth or sixth ranked central defender. So we're going to try to get him out, get something for him, maybe get some develop for him, no big deal. Uh, and then we are trying to get both Hayes and Gray uh, out, either on loan or just straight up contract. Right now we have a contract for Hayes. It's not worth much. Um, how much did we pay for him? We got him on a free. So, you know, there you go. Uh, he actually played okay for us, two games, all two games that he played. But uh, we obviously didn't do much for him. We actually went out on loan last season for Bristol Reavers. Bristol, Bristol Rovers, Bristol Rovers uh, in League One and actually did not do a very good job. So I think it was okay to see if we can get him sold on, especially since we got him for free. Get some value for him. Cool. No big deal. We weren't going to play him. Same thing with Gray. We really just, we have too many people in those spots. We were not planning on playing them. I don't think I have anybody else coming in. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. We'll come back to Campbell. I, I remember him now. So it's one of my director of football put up, but I actually kind of like him. So I'm actually hoping that he says yes. We will circle back to him momentarily but let's go back to the transfer ends the actual transfers that have come in oh actually sorry before we do that let's go look at Amduni and pastor so first up Amduni left he was getting upset and and here's the thing both Amduni and pastor had 
relegation release clauses. Now, was it silly of me to leave the relegation release clauses in there? Sure. But, you know, I kind of was hoping that we would, uh, you know, either stay up or whatever. It, it was fine. And then they were both, if I remember correctly, I think they both had them locked from their agents when we brought them in. Usually I don't mind just high release clause. Like if we got a release clause for like 20 million bucks for somebody, cool. Somebody ever offers me 20 million bucks for any player I bring in in the near future, I'm okay with that. Uh, usually relegation release clauses, I don't, I try to remove when I can. Uh, but in this case, I think these guys both had them locked uh, specifically. So I could not remove them. It is what it is. But uh, obviously M. Dooney didn't play like amazingly well for us last season, but he did really well for us the season before. So I would have loved to have kept him. Thing is, we brought him in for 1.3. Left, he sold him for 5.5. That's a pretty good piece of business, honestly. Um, pretty good profit for him. I'm pretty happy with that. Again, I would like like to have kept him because uh, I know he plays well at the championship level. But getting a profit for him, especially when there was we were kind of forced to do so with the release clause, uh, and that's probably probably part of the reason why I was okay with the release clause when I brought him in. We brought him bought him for 1.3 mil or whatever, and his release clause was 5 mil. I mean, at the time, I'm probably thinking, you know what? <laughs> That's a great profit. If we have to sell him, oh no, we get a four million profit. So uh, that's how that went down. Uh, and then Pastor here, obviously, we would like to have kept him. I think because he played six point seven five last time we were in champ. Or no, sorry, last time he was in championship, he would have been nice to keep around and play at that level. We bought him in for eight point seven five, sold him for seven point two five. Again, another release clause. Didn't have a lot of control over that, but didn't lose a ton of money on him. And honestly, the money we made for um, um, I'm doing it made up for any losses we would have had over here. So net gains across players, probably a couple players I would like to have kept. Several players that I'm happier are probably gone. So overall, not terrible. But here's the players we brought in. Um, I mean, nobody crazy expensive, except maybe, I mean, Fletcher's the most expensive one here, and we'll take a look at him for sure. But first up, Didio uh, comes in. He comes in here as a solid midfielder uh, or defensive midfielder. He could technically be as an attacking midfielder if we absolutely needed him or on the left-hand side. He's, he's very capable in all those spots. Uh, more than likely, he'll play one of these two spots in the middle, but I, I like the fact that he is capable as an attacking midfielder if we need him for that, because we very likely will be playing an attacking midfielder this season. Uh, I will show you that again in the formation. But overall, solid player. Seems like a solid solid guy. Um, he's been playing in Serie A for, for three years. Uh, 6.74, 6.79, 6.8. It's not amazing stats, but, you know, solid stats. I mean, they, they seem to... I mean, that's, that's the premier level of Italy. Right. So, I mean, we had no players playing at a 6.8 at the premier level of England. Now, I know England is higher rated than, than Italy, but Italy's not poorly rated. So I think we are, I think if he can play at that level in Italy, he should play it. He should be able to play at a 7.0 in the championship easily, in my opinion. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, getting for 3.8 mil. I thought that was a decent run of business. Um, we'll find out. Honestly, sometimes you just don't know until you get him in here. Uh, Angelina, we actually had Angelina last year. Uh, as our backup goalkeeper. Uh, honestly, pretty solid get backup goalkeeper. 29 years old, uh, experienced goalkeeper. He uh, Obviously, we're going to be playing Watts as our primary, but Angelina's going to get some early starts because Watts is injured right now. So I'm glad that we brought Angelina in, especially somebody of his level. I'm surprised he agreed to be a backup goalkeeper, quite frankly, at his skill level. Uh, and we got him, obviously, pretty <laughs> cheap, uh, all things considered. Um, we'll come back to Fletcher. Uh, Fisher comes in here. He's on a loan. Uh, he's going to be able to play on our left-hand side primarily. Looks like a fairly solid player, honestly. I thought he looked looked all right. Uh, 6.81 on loan with Swansea last season uh, in the championship. 6.73 on loan with Wigan the year before. So we know he can play in the championship at a reasonable rate. So we'll see if he can do stuff for us as well. I thought he was an okay pickup for a loanee that we don't have to really pay a whole lot of money for. Uh, Billy Bell comes in here as a defender on the right-hand side. Uh, Three-star comes right behind uh, Hecker, especially with Spagnoli leaving. Uh, seemed like a reasonably okay player. Um, I like his bravery balance. I mean, that's pretty good. But uh, he has played as a 6.87 for, for Sunderland last season. So we, again, we know he can play at the championship level. I mean, 6.47 uh, before that for West Brom, not great, but he obviously picked it back up once he moved over to Sunderland. Uh, the year before that for West Brom, 6.7 in the championship, 6.82 in the championship, 6.93 in the championship for six games. So we know he can play at the championship level. I mean, he, he, he seems reasonably solid he's just going to come in as a backup for us at the moment unless he just starts taking off uh maybe paid a little bit more than i probably should have for him but i honestly think he's going to be an okay player and he's actually valued at double what we paid for so i think it was okay to piece of business we shall find out Hack, uh, hawkshaw comes in here he's actually a guy that my 
Uh, actually, both of the, Oh, no, I'm sorry. Hawkshaw is one I went after. Apologies. Clarkson's one my director of football put up. Hawkshaw I went after. Uh, he's just a 23-year-old uh, midfielder here. Uh, we specifically wanted to look for Mazzala because I think I'm going to try out playing a Mazzala this season. We'll see what that looks like. Uh, but he comes in here. Uh, he played in the uh, Scotland Premier level, 6.98. He has played in the championship, 6.76 and 6.9. So we know he can definitely uh, excel in the championship. So we'll see what he can do this season for us on a loan. Uh, we're paying a decent chunk of you know monthly cost for him, to be fair. But I still think it, overall it should be okay. Clarkson comes in here. He's one of my director of football player. 31 years old. I don't try to go for older guys usually, but he's a solid three and a half star player based on our current skill level with our other players. And he obviously can play at this championship level as well. 6.83 a couple seasons ago, 6.79 last season. So we know he can play. Um, and the fact that he can play both defensive midfielder and midfielder, uh, there's a possibility we'll play some midfielder as well. And he can also play attacking midfielder in a pinch. So the fact that he's very flexible let me uh let me believe that uh that would be a decent pickup i mean we paid a little bit of money for him not a lot though honestly i'm okay with that uh the big one is andy fletcher here he comes in here for his attacking midfielder on the right hand side he comes in from wolves 24 years of age three and a half star current ability could be as high as four star really really quick guy acceleration agility is really high pace not so much but like he can he can really sprint off the ball is probably what i'm looking for uh his crossing's not amazing but not you know it's it's <laughs> It's at least above a 10. Uh, sometimes we get a lot of guys that are below 10s for wingers and stuff like that. Uh, so we'll see how he plays. He looked all right to me. I feel like he might be all right. We'll find out. Uh, he has played uh, two games in the Premier level. 6.9. Not really much to read into there. 6.84 in Bundesliga 2, which is kind of around the level of a ch of Skybet Championship. I think it's a little bit lower. But uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think, I think that's the case, right? Bundesliga 2 is here. Uh, Skybet Championship just a couple spots above it. So yeah, we know if he can play at that level in the Bundesliga too, then he should be able to play reasonably well in the championship. Where's the Super League by any chance? It's pretty low, isn't it? Uh, it's not even on my list. Uh, I think that's pretty low, but obviously he excelled there. So we'll see what he can do. I don't know. I, I, I liked I liked the way he looked and maybe I paid too much for him. I, we'll find out. Sometimes you just don't know until you try. I mean, he's currently transfer valued at, again, basically double what we paid for him. But... It's really, don't read too much into that, I would imagine. I doubt we could ever sell him for that much. But we might be able to break even someday if sometimes for some reason he doesn't work out. But those are our players. Uh, and then the one player that we final, the last player we have trying to come in is Adam Campbell here. He's actually one of my director of football put up as well. It's going to be a loan if he does come in. Uh, but he looks to be a pretty solid advanced forward. Uh, we are probably going to be playing two advanced forwards this season. Most likely Mateo and Ojala are our primaries. But uh, Campbell coming in here, uh, three and a half star current ability, three and a half, four star potential. I really like his dribbling finishing first touch, honestly. 16, 14, 12 at our level is is pretty reasonable. So we'll see what he can do. Uh, he did not play well in the championship, or sorry, in the Premier League last year, but he did get 11 goals in the championship when he played for Swansea uh, two years ago. So we know he can score. Six, and he actually, uh, in League One for Huddersfield, he got 12 goals. So that's more goals than we've seen in a while. Uh, so I thought he might be a pretty decent pickup. Not going to cost us an absolute arm and a leg, but we shall see. Uh, unfortunately, even though he's 21 years old, I think we will have to register him because he's a loney, which I, I kind of hate, to be perfectly honest. But here is the tactic we're looking at right now. It's awkward. I get it. It's definitely awkward. But um, honestly, sometimes asymmetrical tactics do throw the AI off a little bit, so I'm not afraid of them necessarily. Um, but, and, and I could definitely see some issues, you know, we got a big hole right here, right? I mean, I, I get that in this more attacking one. Uh, we do have a cover defender, so they're going to stay back a little bit and try to help make sure nothing crazy happens. So we'll see. This is my attacking side. Uh, and then I do have a defensive version that is, you know, basically the same thing, but we shift, uh, uh, basically just those two players back, right? And we, we hold like an anchor here to kind of help hold down the fort. Uh, and then the Mazala can just roam kind of where it, whatever. Uh, this one, not it's, it's going to look bad because uh, Salisbury is not actually the player that we would put here. Um, but when we do have the right player there, it actually covers the field pretty nicely according to the analysis. So we'll find out. Uh, I'm going to start with this. It may fall apart, but I've had reasonably good um, play from some of these kind of off-the-wall formations. And the biggest reason why we have this formation is I literally just sat down made a made a 
a formation. I basically put every single possible spot on the field on my on my piece of paper here, and then just wrote down who are my best players and where would they be best for or best at. And quite frankly, Bedford is one of my two best players in the entire uh, team, and he's just better as a pushed up on the left hand side as opposed to being back here. I can't imagine it's going to make a significant difference in being pushed up a little bit, but if he feels more comfortable there, we're going to try it. Uh, and then as far as other players, I mean, I thought about playing two midfielders, um, but I really wanted to bring the attacking midfielders in here. Salisbury is a good player. Uh, we also have some other guys that can play attacking midfielder. It's a crazy formation, but again, sometimes crazy formations work out better than you would expect. So we're going to try it. Uh, since this first game is a home game, even though it's against Leicester, I am going to play the attacking kind of version of this. Uh, if it was an away game, I would probably play the more the de defensive version and be a little bit safer and try to get uh, a draw or something like that, especially against a team like Leicester. But we'll find out. I'm mostly happy with the team. Um, we got some good players. I mean, as of right now, according to whoever's picking my stuff, uh, which is, do we have? I don't know who we have picking it. But, uh, I mean, we got four, three and a half, even our backup goalkeeper, three and a half star, Hecker, three and a half stars, Bedford, again, four stars, Dedeo, three and a half star, Fletcher, three and a half stars, Mateo, three and a half stars. Everybody else is three stars except for Salisbury right now, uh, who actually is not going to play here. I need to change that. I have not changed that. Why did I not change it? I thought I did. I'll change it before next episode. No big deal. But that's our team. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, I think it's at least a team that's good enough to uh, stay in the championship for sure. I, I, I do not think we're going to be in a relegation battle. Uh, when it's all said and done. Now, are we a good enough team to get into playoffs or even just get promoted outright? I don't know. Until we really get into some games, it's really hard to tell. Um, but I will also show you this. The season preview does have us currently uh, 19th, although I, I guess technically tied for 16th with Swansea here. So, I I mean, currently... Uh, how, how many teams is it? Just the bottom three, yeah. Uh, currently, we are not expected to be relegated if you look if you if you can believe that at all um so there's that but we'll find out uh do we have any players on this list mm, no we do not oh we do we have the theoretically best goalkeeper in um the championship which feels good unfortunately again he's injured right this second but overall feels pretty good any other key players that are on our list here uh, there's Wasson we already talked about. Uh, Fletcher. I mean, there you go. Fletcher, new guy we just brought in. He's in the, he's in the key player list. So we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm looking forward to this season. I actually think, I think, uh, we're going to do well. I'm, I mean, we, we lost so many games last season. I'm ready to win some games and I'm really hoping that this is a decent team that can do it. Truthfully, I think this might be a better team than when we did win the championship. Just a little bit better. Um, but again, just because you got a better team doesn't mean you can actually get things done. Uh, I will show you guys the Leicester game. Uh, we might show you the Salford game, just because why not? Getting uh, some money from the Carabelle Cup and just making a good run of it might not be a bad idea. Uh, they want us to be competitive, so we might show that one. I think that might be a, might be an okay idea. But I'm excited to get this season started. Hopefully you guys are as well. But I do appreciate you guys watching. May God bless you, and I hope you join me again next time. Thank you, and goodbye. I wanted to give a special shout out to the following channel members. Thank you so much for supporting the channel.